You went to another country. Where'd you go this week? I was in Paris, France. What were you doing there? There's like a important AI conference and Jonathan Ross, the founder of Grok and I kicked it off with like a fireside chat for like 45 minutes at the beginning just to get everybody amped up and excited. Cool. Yeah, it was really what good. Did, anything interesting come out of it? I think the soundbite that made an impact on me was, was from Jonathan. So I think he did a very good job of explaining where NVIDIA is really strong, which is really in learning, and where NVIDIA is trying to build the business, which is an in inference. But the problem is the features almost compete with each other between learning and inference. And I think that that was a good clarification. And then the second thing is he said that if he deploys his roadmap, he'll have 50% of the available inference compute by the end of next year. Wow. Based on all the needs of like OpenAI and Meta and everybody else, which is a... Wait, but that's a smaller physical footprint. Is that right? And it's just because they can do higher token per second? Less power, higher tokens per second across all the major models. So it would, it would be meaningfully less power and meaningfully cheaper. So that was a pretty amazing soundbite. The, his, his whole explanation was actually really good. So, I mean, if you listen to the spaces we did, I thought it was good. I thought this was even better. So I'm trying to get a copy of the, of the talk because it was taped so that we can kind of post it. At a minimum, anybody who's interested in studying NVIDIA should listen to what he has to say because I think the, the nuances between us and them are really profound and they were pretty stark the way that he described them. So it was cool. It was great to be in Paris, frankly. How does NVIDIA respond to this movement or this notion that there is an entirely different chip category focused purely on inference? Do they have inference focused chips in development or a different roadmap that they're going to have to kick up now? I mean, I think it's very hard for them. It's, it is a structural innovator's dilemma. And why is that? Because they've made some architectural decisions around things like HBM, which is high bandwidth memory, or specific kinds of extremely high throughput optical cables. And why these things matter is that they've gone and bought up the world supply and they've basically bear hugged these markets as a structural part of their design. Now that makes sense and it's very legal. The problem is that if you architect around it and go through a totally orthogonal design process, we're not subject to any of those supply chain considerations. And I think he explained that really well. I didn't understand it in nearly as much detail as I did leaving. So I think that's an important takeaway. It's also really important for all the hundreds of chip startups and for these venture investors who are ripping money into these companies to know these differences. Because if you are investing in a company that is subject to you know, HBM in their design decisions or these specific optical cables or a whole bunch of other things, you're going to be in a really difficult spot because NVIDIA has bought them all. So I thought that that was a that was really interesting. The other thing that NVIDIA does brilliantly is what Intel did in the 80s and 90s when they wanted to kind of choke the market for CPU competition, which is that they were able to define a metric that everybody started to pay attention to, which for them was clock speed. And if you remember, yeah. Intel would push Moore's law and they would push transistor density and clock speed as the measurement of value. Now, for a lot of consumers, None of us knew any better. And so every time we saw a new chip, we would go through the Pentium upgrade cycle because we thought that's what we were supposed to do. It turns out that clock speed doesn't really factor into speed the way that you think about it and experience it as an end user using software. And it's the same in AI. And so we talked about that as well. So it's an incredibly important company, NVIDIA is. I think they're performing brilliantly. They're running many of the same plays that Intel did to try to create total dominance. But there's some very important nuances around power and around supply chain decisions and technology decisions that, frankly, some people would think are unsustainable. And the more I understand them, I would be in that camp as well. So it, it, I thought it was a very important conversation and hopefully we can post it. Yeah, it's cool. It was, and by the way, it's great to be in Paris too. 